Hmm. The first person I ever followed on Instagram, I can probably tell you. Oh, I don't know where my phone is. Um, oh, I'm filming on my phone right now. Oh my God, what an idiot. <laughs> Hey, what's up, Teen Vogue? This is Troy Sivan coming to you from my parents' spare bedroom in Melbourne in isolation. Um, and I'm gonna tell you some of my firsts. My first word was mom. I think it was like mommy or dada. I actually don't know. Um, I'm nervous to ask because I feel like my parents would, like one of them is bound to get upset because I'm sure that my dad thinks it was dada and my mom thinks it was mama. My first book that I read was I wish I could remember what it was called. It was this dog that could talk. Uh, what was it? I'm gonna Google this, sorry, one second. Dog talking book. Maybe it was Australian? Yeah, 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 Selby. Australian author Duncan Ball. Um, there was these Australian books called the Selby books and this dog could talk. Um, that's all I remember. My first pet was a um, kind of like a mutt of a dog named Jagger. She was so, so, so sweet and so cute. And um, she, we sadly had to put her down last year, I want to say, but she lived till she was like 18 or something like that. So it was amazing. My first CD was Ella Funk by the Black Eyed Peas. I got it as a birthday present from a friend. Um, and I loved that album. I thought that album was so good. And I actually re-listened to that album the other day and it is so interesting. Like the pop sound back then was just so wildly different from what it is today. They like really carved out a thing. It was very cool to listen to. My first job, what was the first thing I actually like got paid for? Probably busking on the street. Um, I took a little like hat and a little CD player that I could plug a microphone in and I had um, my CD of like my instrumental songs and I stood in Perth city and um, sang on the street and people gave me money and it was great. I actually hated it. I don't know why I said it was great. It was an awful experience all around, but um, yeah, it's so vulnerable and terrible. Like people are walking past you and you're just like pouring your heart out and um, yeah, it was not fun. So I did it like twice. You know, it's like the craziest thing ever. I feel very lucky to say this. I've never had a real job, like ever. Um, I want to say my first paid by somebody else job was probably maybe like X-Men Origins Wolverine when I did that movie. Yeah, I think that was probably my first time getting paid by somebody else. My first audition was for X-Men Origins Wolverine in I think 2007 maybe. I didn't know how to audition, had no idea what I was doing and I ended up booking the job which was like such a dream come true. I love the X-Men movies, um, always have, used to like play X-Men with my little brother. We would like, you know, each have a different superpower or whatever and pretend um, to save buildings. That was like always the plot, it was like a building was falling down and we needed to like fly and save it. So when I got to actually be in one of the X-Men movies, it was like the craziest experience for me. My first car, God, you're really putting me on the spot. This is also embarrassing. My first car is actually the car that I own currently um, and it's very nice. So I feel too embarrassed to say what it is, but I just, I didn't own a car because I, I didn't live anywhere for a really long time. I was like just living out of my suitcase and traveling around. So it made no sense to get a car. And then finally, when I like actually put down roots in LA, I got um, basically my dream car. So I'm, um, yeah, very happy. My first best friend was crazy to say, but still my best friend to this day, Kayla. Oh, yeah, no, because Kerry came later to school. Yeah, it was Kayla or Ryan, and both of them I'm still like, I've spoken to both of them today. So um, yeah, we were two, maybe even younger. It was like right when I moved from South Africa to Australia. We met at like pre-preschool, before we even started like official preschool, and um, we all met there. My first crush was, Oh, it's been like 10 years, so I can say it. His name was Jordan, and I didn't realize that I had a crush on him at the time. Um, I just was like, whoa, this is like the first boy that I've ever met that um, like doesn't really like sports and is obsessed with like photography and like all of these creative pursuits. Um, and that just really rocked my world because I had never met another boy like that before. He kind of broke my heart because he's straight, um, which I've never done that again since. Like I learned my lesson, no straight boys. Um, so yeah, I guess it was a good lesson to learn early on, but I was definitely a little bit heartbroken at the time. So I guess you get a two for one. That was my first crush and my first heartbreak. Love you, Jords. My first celebrity crush. I used to think I had a crush on Miley Cyrus. 
looking back, I know that I just like really wanted to be friends with her. I used to Google her every day. Um, yeah, I don't know why I did that. I used to like go into the news tab and just like see what she was up to every single day. And then my first like boy crush was um, like High School Musical Zac Efron. And um, yeah, it was bad. I cried because I was like, oh no, I think I'm not straight. Why do I like Zac Efron as much as I do? I was just really scared. My first awful date was probably my first date um, <laughs> because he went on a grinder while I was there in front of me. And I was like trying to be all romantic. Like I thought we were for sure gonna get like married basically. And um, yeah, no, it wasn't good. My first kiss was with my friend Daniela. We're still friends to this day. It was in my, like in the bathroom at my house in Perth. I think it was like a, like a seven minutes in heaven kind of situation. Like it wasn't, it wasn't organic at all. And it was cool. I enjoyed it. I think, it, yeah, it was fun. First time I was ever really embarrassed. Rough story. We were playing it at school, like tag. I ran into the bathroom, the boys bathroom, and I was standing at the urinal peeing. And this boy who like always gave me so much shit at school came in and he was it and he saw that I was peeing. He knew that I was peeing. He knew that I wasn't just hiding in there, but he came and he tagged me it and pushed me into the urinal. And I got covered in urinal soap and I had to go home from school. It was pretty disgusting and I was pretty embarrassed. My first major disappointment. Hmm, that's a really good question. I think maybe my first major disappointment was maybe like not um, getting a job that I really wanted or something like that. Like sending out an audition for a project that I was really, really excited about and not getting it. But at the same time, I think as like a, as a young creative, you're so kind of used to that rejection um, that it was probably only disappointing the very first time, you know, like, or you get disappointed, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't cut the same way anymore as it did, um, which I think is a really healthy, good thing. Like, I think if you get really upset every single time something doesn't work out, um, you're just not gonna kind of last because you have to, so cheesy to say, but there really is like a million no's before there's one yes kind of thing. So. Um, yeah, I guess I learned that I, I, I wanted to persevere because I was loving what I was doing. My first email handle <laughs> was troythehotboy at hotmail.com. Um, you can still email it if you want. I don't know who owns it now, but it's not me. Um, yeah, I don't know why that was what it was, but that's what it was. It was for MSN, it was for like chatting to my friends. Hmm, the first person I ever followed on Instagram, I can probably tell you. Oh, I don't know where my phone is. Um, Oh, I'm filming on my phone right now. Oh my God, what an idiot. <laughs> um, so the first person that I followed on Instagram was probably probably my friend Kayla or something like that. Like one of my Perth friends. The first vacation I ever went on was going back to South Africa with my family, I think. Cause we moved from South Africa to Australia when I was really young. And then we would go back and visit like my Nana and my aunties and my cousins and all that stuff. The first vacation I ever took myself on as an adult was probably, oh, I went to New Zealand. Yeah, with an ex-boyfriend, I went to New Zealand and I think that that was like my first time paying for my own holiday. It was really nice, we went to Queenstown, it was great. The first song I memorized all the words to, I think it was Like a Prayer by Madonna, or maybe like Barbie Girl by Aqua. I think it might've been Barbie Girl. I don't remember them anymore, unfortunately. I, I just like immediately am transported back to like those indoor playgrounds where all the kids would have their birthday parties and that song just like, pumping so loud. The first time I knew that I wanted to be a musician was when I saw my parents had like a Michael Jackson concert on VHS. I just was so in awe of his like control and command of the stage and of all of these like however many thousands and thousands of people. I was like, oh my God, I want to do that. First live music I ever attended was um, Black Eyed Peas show actually, same as my first CD. I, I took my sister for her bat mitzvah. So it was her 12th birthday and my, I was 14. It was when they did like, um, I Got A Feeling and all that stuff. So it was like, it was a big tour. First song I ever wrote was, um, it was this song called You're Beautiful. And the lyric was, I've been to many places and I've seen so many faces, but I haven't seen anything like you, you're beautiful. I had a tape recorder and I would rewind to the beginning, click record, and then I had a, a fan like that would blow air because it was hot. And I would put it on the other, put the recorder on the other side of the fan, sing into the fan and it would like chop my, you know how like a fan makes you sound like a robot kind of thing? I thought it was like a Britney Spears effect. So I would sing that song through the fan into the recorder and then I would just rewind and do it again. 
My first red carpet, I think was probably for um, X-Men, but it was sweet. It wasn't like a real red carpet. It was like, cause I wasn't a big enough part to be flown to the actual premiere. But of course my mom was like, Troy, we're having a premiere, like you're in a movie. My mom like, con this is so embarrassing. She contacted like the local movie theater and she was like, yeah, my son's in the movie, like whatever. And we invited all of our friends and stuff like that. And I, I don't think there was an actual red carpet or anything like that, but there definitely was like a photo up moment of me just like against a wall, you know, smiling for all of like my mom's friends' cameras. First time I was ever recognized in public, I was probably like, I wanna say 15 or 16. And I think it happened from YouTube. Like I think somebody had seen my YouTube videos. Yeah, it was wild. That was like a crazy experience. And then slowly but surely it just started happening more and more and more. And it's it's crazy. I feel really lucky that it actually happened quite slowly for me. Like it started so um, minimally and it was just like the most chill thing in the world and just the most exciting thing. And then slowly more and more. Cause I, I remember how overwhelmed I felt and like just mind blown I was the first time that it happened to me that like, Somebody who gets famous like overnight, I can't even imagine what that would do to um, someone's like psyche. I think it would just be the most insane experience. I think the first time I saw a movie in theaters was um, Lion King, The Lion King. Yeah, the animated one. I didn't go to my first movie last year. No, I've seen some movies in the theaters. <laughs> yeah. The first time I was ever really starstruck was when I met Guy Sebastian, who won Australian Idol. He was the first winner of Australian Idol. So he's like Australia's Kelly Clarkson and um, I was singing at uh, the Perth Telethon, which was just like a TV charity event. He saw me at Soundcheck and he came up to me afterwards and we got speaking and I was just like, so, so shook. And then he actually, it was really sweet. He was like, do you know any of my songs? And I was like, yeah, duh. And we ended up singing on the TV together. Like he was like, oh, do you want to sing with me? And so we did a duet that night and I was like, so, it was just an amazing experience for me. The first thing that I would do if I had a billion dollars probably give away like 95% of it. I don't need that much money. I don't think anyone really does. I would give away a lot of it. And then with the rest, I would probably, I would allow myself to interior design my house with like no budget. You know, like I would just let myself go. Um, Cause I think that would be just like the funnest thing ever. Thanks so much for watching Team Vogue. Hopefully you learned something a little bit about me and my firsts. Um, I hope that you're staying safe. I hope that you're staying home if you can. Also, by the way, I have a song out called Take Yourself Home. And if you buy a t-shirt, I'm selling these three t-shirts. If you buy it, 100% of the proceeds goes to COVID relief and you can get it at my website, choicefun.com um, if you're interested. I love you. Thanks for watching. Bye.